Hey everybody, welcome to the Sim Hangout. My name's Mark. Thank you very much for joining me again today. In this video, we're going to be talking about sensitivity. And yes, we know that actually you are a sensitive soul, but don't worry, your secret's safe with me. The sensitivity that we're talking about are the settings you can apply to axes on your peripherals that will improve the overall control and enjoyment within flight simulation. And it could well be the solution to that peripheral that just is not behaving and not doing what it should do. In this video, I'll show you where to find those settings and some of the adjustments that are possible and what they all do. So with that all said, let's get started. If you find this video useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It helps the channel. Quick message from this video sponsor. Clearance clear to the Palomar Airport. Support after departure, flighting 280. Expect radar vector. When you're ready to take the next step towards realism with tactile feedback and you're looking for the most realistic navigational device either as part of a cockpit build or standalone, then look to Flight Sim Builder who have a range of very competitively priced products. Their quality built units are replicas of the real thing and I can personally attest to them and why? Well, I use them myself. New from Flight Sim Builder is their Steam Gauges panel. Are you ready to take the next step towards ultimate immersion? Want to know more? Visit Flight Sim Builder Direct or check out my review videos. Link in the notes below. A sensitivity setting can be applied to any peripheral that has an axis. And why is that important? Well, we've all been there trying to control the aircraft with a peripheral that's just oversensitive. It's too twitchy. Here I am in the Beechcraft G36 controlling it just with my rudder pedals and trying to stay in the center line. Although I'm just doing small adjustment on the rudder pedals, the aircraft is reacting too aggressively. And you can dial in the settings to suit yourself. Here's the same test, same weather, same aircraft. After I've applied some changes to the sensitivities of the rudder axis, the changes I've made have allowed for finer control with the small movements, and I think you'll agree, certainly a lot better at staying on the center line. Of course, this doesn't just apply to rudder pedals, but to any peripheral, be it your yoke, flight stick, gamepad, or any other peripheral for that matter. First, a golden rule that shouldn't be ignored, especially if you're having problems with your peripheral. Make sure the peripheral is correctly calibrated. In the taskbar search box, type in Control Panel. Select the Control Panel, and they present a variety of different options available to you. Select Devices and Printers. Not Device Manager, Devices and Printers. Click on that. A new window will open. I'm using Windows 11. Then select View More Devices. Once again, another window will open. Page all the way down and select More Devices and Printer Settings. Once here, select your chosen peripheral. In my case, the Verpal rudder pedals. You must select it using the right hand mouse button. Select Game Controller Settings. Once again, another window will open, and from this, select the chosen peripheral, in my case, the Verpal rudder pedals. Then select Properties. This will take you to the Test tab, where you can check the function and centering of all the various axes and buttons on your controller. Under the Settings tab, you get the option to calibrate the device, where you can recalibrate all the various axes. I'm not going to run through how to calibrate your device. There's a ton of videos out there on that. But in a nutshell, make sure your device is working correctly before doing any other changes, or alternatively, for selected peripherals, use the calibration software that came with it. To adjust your sensitivity settings spawn at an airport, then from the Settings menu, choose Controls, and then from the right-hand side, select the peripheral that you want to adjust the sensitivity on. For this tutorial, I'll choose my Verpal rudder pedals, and rudder pedals are one of the most likely peripherals where you'll want to adjust the sensitivity. Any hardware setting changes such as sensitivities are saved under the general controls. If you haven't made any changes, chances are it will show none, which means it's using default. I've already configured my Verpal rudder pedals with left and right brake axes and the rudder axis itself, which is joystick L axis Z. If at any time unsure, you can search by input, move the respective axes, and it will indicate anything mapped to that particular axis. To find our sensitivity settings for a given peripheral, select the hardware settings. On the left-hand side, you can select the axes that you want to make adjustments to. 
Currently Access Z is active, and as soon as you make any changes, it will ask to save it as a new profile. My new general profile is the default name. I'm going to give it something that's a little bit more descriptive, and I'm going to call it Default Rudder. Then I'm going to go ahead and select OK. If we now go back to the previous menu, we will see the new profile will be indicated there under General Controls. There it is, Default Rudder. Let's now head back to Hardware Settings and run through the various options that are available to us. And what do the various settings mean and what do they actually do? The amount of axes travel is indicated by the straight line and the current position indicated by the white dot. As you physically move the axis, the white dot should move up and down the line so you can see that you've got full range of travel and that the white dot is in the correct place, in this case central, so you're aware you don't have any calibration problems. Regrettably, although the SIM has been out for some time now, this is broken and movement is not recorded. This is a basic requirement and more than just a little disappointing. Hopefully by the time you watch this video, this will be fixed. We have two sensitivity settings, plus and minus. As we increase or decrease the value, so the input curve changes. In this particular case, plus is the right axis for my rudder, and minus is the left axis for the rudder. Both sensitivities are set at zero as default. Moving the bar to make the value positive makes it more sensitive, and negative makes it less sensitive to initial input. Let me explain. As I'm using a rudder, let's visualize the right axis. If you're using a joystick, it would probably be joystick when you push it forward. And here I've divided both axes up into fifths. So each box represents 20%. The vertical axis represents the amount of movement in the sim. And the horizontal axis represents the amount of physical movement on your peripheral. Currently, and by default, it's at 1 to 1. So when I move my rudder pedals or joystick 20%, in SIM it moves 20% through its range as well. We can adjust the sensitivity by doing something like this. I'm going to turn it down by moving it into the negative position. I'm going to move from 0 to 0 0.4 or 40%. And what this has done is changed the ratio from 1 to 1 to 2 to 1. Physically, I'll need to move the rudder pedal or joystick through 40% of its range, which is two boxes, to get 20% input into the sim, or one box. This will allow me to have much greater control and finer granularity in terms of small adjustments, yet I've retained the full movement of the axes. I'm sure you get it by now. When adjusting a particular axis, you would want them to correspond. In my case, both right rudder and left rudder, the sensitivity has been turned down. For reasons which I th hope will be obvious, they should match. Various rudder pedals will have a different range of movement, but for my Verpal rudder pedals, I found something in the region of minus 0.4 to be ideal. Should be noted, if you were adjusting an axis such as a throttle, etc., while I wouldn't adjust the sensitivity, I would leave that linear one to one. Let's now touch on another important setting, which is dead zone. A dead zone defines an area of travel of the physical axis in which no input into the sim is received. Sometimes, and especially with older peripherals, you may see that center white ball moving. Small amounts of vibration, which is what we call chatter. This is probably due to a damaged or dirty potentiometer. In this particular case, I've created a dead zone of 0.05 or 5%. If I did have chatter or small amounts of movement, so it wouldn't feed erroneous information into the sim and make aircraft control very difficult. A dead zone would also be very useful if you've got a controller that constantly makes the aircraft bank to the left or right. Its center position may be slightly off center. Feeding in a small dead zone may well resolve that problem. I've had to feed in a small dead zone on my gamepad, for example, as the joysticks, which are axes, are a little sticky and do not always return to center. Now, 5% dead zone is fairly generous. So if you click in the box, you should be able to enter something like 0.03, a 3% dead zone, for example. But once again, unfortunately, that's not functioning correctly. Unless I'm doing something wrong, it will not accept the input at this stage. And once again, pending a fix. 
Let's move on now and discuss the extremity dead zone. By default, it's set to zero. And what does it do? It creates a dead zone at the end of the axis movement, proportional to the value that you set. Here I'm changing the extremity dead zone from zero to 0 0.5, or 50%, whilst leaving my sensitivity settings intact. So what has this done? Now, the full range of physical movement on my peripheral, rudder pedals, joystick, etc., will only produce a maximum input into the sim of 50%. You might want to use this for various axes movements, perhaps condition lever and so on, but having a setting of something in the region of about 50% may well be very interesting for, say, helicopter pilots, as they will require a finer and higher degree of control on the rudders, it's a very interesting setting, rarely used, and can often overcome a number of different axes problems. And lastly, let's now turn to neutral. What does this do? Once again, default is zero. Positive moves it to the right, negative moves it to the left. And this can be particularly handy when you've got a faulty peripheral, where for whatever reason the center point is offset physically and you need it to match in sim. You would move the neutral position to match where the ball is sitting. Reminder, you should have calibrated first, perhaps through wear and tear and so on. This can turn a redundant peripheral into a usable one again. Obviously, if you do adjust this, you may have to review your sensitivity settings. For anyone interested, I, for my Verpal rudder pedals, I use my sensitivity plus and minus at 0 0.4 and leave everything else at default but I do feed in a 5% dead zone, advisable for rudders. I'd prefer 3%, of course, as often you do get a little bit of movement when you place your feet on the brakes, and the dead zone can help cancel that out. As I use the same rudder pedals for many different aircraft, this is one of the occasions where I'll often set it as default. So if my pedals are connected, these will be the settings that I'm able to use, without having to go in and reset them. In Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, we also had a reactivity setting, but this is no longer available unless they add it in, in the future. Anyway, everybody, I hope that this gives you a better feel and understanding for the sensitivities and the different options and features that are available. The sensitivity settings are worth experimenting with. You will find they can create an amazing difference to your control and your overall enjoyment within the sim itself. As always, thank you so much for staying with me. Take care, look after yourselves. I'll see you all again very soon. And ciao for now.